Hey you, and welcome. My name is Mike, and in this old video, we're talking I can be your hero, comma, baby. Yes, Enrique. I mean, not that Enrique, but another Enrique, and I'm keeping the lyrics because I'm pretty sure that's what he thought, you know, in the old noodle. And guys, come on, you know me at this stage. If there's one thing I love in a story, it's magic. Cracks me up every time, and there's a dash of that in here, right, combined with maybe a sprinkle of guano, and just a drop of, um, all-round, uh, disturbing -in -ness. That word. So yeah, let's, uh, give it a go. Plain old Plano, North Texas. That is our setting for this one. It's part of the Dallas-Fort Worth area, home to almost 300,000 people. A lot of major businesses have their HQs there, and it's a remarkably safe city for its size. Not the sort of place uh, where the thing I'm going to yap away about happens. But it happened. Take us to 2014. Magic of editing. That year, Christina Morris was 23 years old. Christina was a native plain Noan, growing up with her dad and stepmother and her two siblings. But although her parents divorced when she was quite young, she remained very close with her mother, who still lived in the area. Growing up, she was well-liked, quirky, she drew people to her, and attended Allen High School in Plano before heading off to the University of Texas at Dallas, getting the LMA in MA Erketing and eventually she moved to the Fort Worth area where she worked for a dating service company and began dating an old high school friend, Hunter Lee Foster, a forgetful model because he had his name tattooed on him. I mean, to be fair, it never really hurts, right? You know, who am I? Check this out. Well, he was a one-time model, to be fair, because, you know, uh, after school, he went to the, to the Big Apple, you know, he was on Broadway, or wanted to be, do models go on, I don't know. He had stars in his eyes and the old city that, hey, never sleeps, did you know that? But unfortunately, it did not work out too good. Womp. So he was back in the Fort Worth, Dallas area. And Hunter, well, he was now on the hunt. For a job. At this stage, the summer of 2014, Christina and Hunter were living together. She was moving up in the workplace, supporting her fella, and so it goes. Labor Day weekend, it's when we start uh, our story, right? And in 2014, Labor Day was Monday the 1st of September, so the weekend of like the 29th, 30th of August. Party weekend, right? Hunter, he was off to be with the lads in Dallas, and Christina was going back to Plano to be with her gal pals. So, on the 29th of August, her and her friends met up at a friend's apartment located at the shops at Legacy. Ooh, look at you. It's a wealthy little urban village, I'm told. Bars, shops, restaurants, apartments. Her and her mates all headed out for the night, joined by a few of the guys from the Allen High School. They were popping into various bars, shots, 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 though Christina was only having a sup here and there. And after having a grand old time, they all ended up back at the friend's apartment sometime after 2 a.m. Christina was tick tick texting a uh, hunter throughout the night. Seems like she was pretty pissed off and I'm none too happy because she had wanted him to go out with her and her friends in Plano. And he didn't. Her friends noticed she was kind of a little bit upset uh, that night. And initially the plan was for her to crash at her friend's apartment for the night. But she said, fuck it. She hadn't drank too much, and she was like, I want to go home. I want to go back to Fort Worth. That was the plan, though, and she left the apartment at about 3.30 a.m. Christina was, uh, she was afraid of the dark. In fact, her mother would say her greatest fear in life was being in the dark and being kidnapped, being taken away. And that's exactly what happened to her. Her friends the next morning texted her, yeah, you get home safe. No response to messages or calls. After a couple of days to no answer, they contacted her parents and they, they hadn't heard from her either. 
Christina was supposed to have been in work uh, on the Saturday, you know, the day she went home later on that day. She was a no-show. She was supposed to be in work on Tuesday, the 2nd of September. She was a no-show again. And so it was at 11.17 p.m. on Tuesday, the 2nd, that Mark Morris, Christina's father, called the police and reported her missing. Communication, how may I help you? I'm trying to report a missing person, so my daughter. She hasn't shown up from work. I'm just finding out about this. Everybody's freaking out. Is she in the vehicle? Yes. A 2001 Toyota Celica. So. Now you might ask, maybe, why didn't her boyfriend who she lived with say anything earlier? He would have noticed, maybe. Especially as she had messaged him the night of, saying she was coming home. And he lived there, how did she not notice you know, she was missing? Well, as I said, she was pissed off at him, and so he assumed she'd gone to her parents, even though she said she was coming home. It's still odd though, you know what I mean? You think, you think he would have at least heard something from Grumps over here. No, and he wasn't too perturbed by not hearing anything. So after playing a game of telephone and the police now being involved, they figured out who the last person to see Christina Mars that night was. And it was the guy who had been at the party who had walked Christina to her car. That was Enrique Orochi. Whoa, holy smokes, he rules. Enrique also went to the Allen High School with the gang, though he wasn't close friends with them. He was, at best, an acquaintance. He said he had walked with her, but then they went their separate ways, and he didn't enter the same car park she was parked in. He had parked his car elsewhere. He didn't see her get in the car, and he didn't see her leave. In fact, get a load of this, Christina's car was still parked where she had left it. So she didn't drive off. That's for sure, and uh, you know, the car was locked, none of her shit was in it. So she it seemed like she never made it to the car. So the search was on. The police were keen, peachy keen, on speaking with Enrique, who was, uh, who said, yeah, you know, we walk for a bit together, and then we banana split. But he was happy to leave work, he was manager at a Sprint store, and go to Plano PD to speak with detectives. Hello. Hi, Enrique. This is Detective Kathy Stam of Plano Police Department. Hello, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Okay. Sorry about that. Okay. Hey, Enrique, what time do you get off work? I've been leaving here soon. I'm going to finish up a couple of things. Okay. Um, I wanted to see if I could get you to come by so we could talk to you about, um, about Christina. I think you can leave here in a couple minutes and come on by the station. Apparently it is, you know, obviously everybody's getting very concerned. Right. So I haven't shown up, so, um... Yeah, that's kind of and I want to help. Okay. Okay, and real quick, if you don't mind, um, Enrique, you, um, you said that you were leaving at the same time, I mean, same time as Christina, and you guys walked over to where your vehicles were parked, is that right? Uh, well, yeah, we walked. Separate ways we walked uh, until the end of the apartment complex, and after that we just split up because I went to a different parking lot than she was. Okay, um, I hope. I mean, I hope you can get away pretty quick. It's pretty, get pretty serious, and we'd like to try to find her. I'm gonna clock out here soon, and I'll head over there. Okay, thank you so much. If you don't mind, I'm just going to... Uh... They chatted, and Enrique agreed to let the police view the inside of his car, take pictures, all that. Nothing seemed to miss. Hunter Foster, though, the person, you know, people thought should have been the one to alert the police. He wasn't nearly as forthcoming as Enrique was. He didn't want to give the police his phone so they could, you know, digitally forensic the shit out of it. And when he finally did, after quite a bit of time... The police got it, they were like, and you just deleted a load of shit off your phone. What gives? What are you doing? And when he finally agreed to a media interview, he appeared as either a worried partner or a guilty conscience boy. Pretty clear that I'm not emotionally or mentally stable at all. Barely enough to do this right now. I just want her to come home and be alive and say, if I would have been there, none of this would have happened. 
and this, this is what, this is why I don't. I can't do this. So, yeah, I just don't. I'm, I'm done. I don't. Okay, that's fine. Okay. That's fine. Police then found CCTV. This place had cameras all over the place. When they examined it, they found it odd. It contradicted what Enrique said about when they left the party together. They were walking together, and then CCTV showed that he did, in fact, walk into the same car park as she did. He had said he didn't as he parked his car elsewhere. Possibly I could have gone that way and then to the other parking garage. So you're thinking it, it might be a possibility that y'all could have walked through this garage? Possibly, uh, I mean, I'm, I was, I wasn't sober at the time. Okay. His car was in fact seen exiting the car park also, about three minutes after they were seen entering. Is that your car? Yeah. Something's wrong in Enrique. I don't know. This picture is in that garage. That picture is taken of you walking in that garage with Christina, and that's your car coming out of that same garage. I guess I parked there. I went to the my other car and she went her way. I mean, that's all I can tell you. I don't really pay attention to where people go usually. You just stand there and watch where she went? Yeah, I should have done Was that. Was she in your car at all that night? Did she mm -hmm. give her a ride, like, when you guys went to the car to park? Has she ever been in your car? Mm -hmm. Not at all. Mm -hmm. So even his excuse is a lie. Shite job. And so they started to think Christina was probably in that car, willingly or unwillingly. Probably the latter, unfortunately. A more thorough search of his car was conducted, and this time they used luminol. Nothing. A search was done of the trash at uh, Enrique's house where he lived with his mother. In the trash, they found old uh, cleaning supplies. You know, bleach, towels, rags, all that kind of shit. The kind of shit you don't want to have if maybe somebody goes missing. Also, they later found a post-it note in his bin with a few things written in the El Español Mios Dios. Black shirt, texts, bills, things from the 29th of August, the night of. He was also wearing a black shirt that night. When they read that, the police thought, hey, that's a great idea. How about we check your bills and see where you've been and been up to after, you know, the 29th, the night she disappeared. This led them to footage of the morning after the disappearance of Enrique filling his car and washing the back of the Camaro. Where Christina may have been? Question mark. They got a hold of his car once more, and honestly, you would think this was something they would have already done. Search the boot. On the 26th, they got a search warrant once again, and this time they took sections of the trunk and sent them to the lab for DNA tests. So Enrique was the name on everybody's lips, right? Everybody was suspecting him, and so he was like, here, listen, I can't have this. I'm just not having it. Not putting up with it. I'll go on the offensive. Let me tell my side of the story. My truth, if you will. He started his own media campaign. See how it went. I just want to say that I'm innocent. I didn't do anything to Christina Morris. Enrique Oroche spoke to Fox 4 about the search warrant affidavit that points out he made false statements to police. It wasn't that I falsified anything. It's just I forgot where I parked my car. I'm a really distracted guy. I don't have a sense of direction. What is your relationship with Christina Morris? She was just an acquaintance from high school. Never went out? When, that was the first time that we ever went out ever since I met her back in high school. What do you think about the actions of the family against you and your family? I feel like they're very wrong. They're accusing me of something. They're pressuring me to say something I don't know, personally. I just feel like I'm, I'm being threatened now. I'm being, uh, they've put my name out there so much that people are starting to see me as a monster when I'm really one of the nicest per people you can ever meet. Are you afraid for your life? I am afraid for my life because of all the threats. Enrique, do you have anything to do with Christina's disappearance? No, I do not. I have nothing to do with her disappearance. Did you harm her in any way? 
No, I didn't. I wouldn't harm anything. Not even an animal, a fly, nothing. But through all of this, Christina was missing. The searches uncovered nothing. Enrique and Christina barely knew each other. He seemed the likely guy, last person and all that. But there was nothing foolproof here. We learned that Enrique has lied since day one. Christina Morris's mom speaks about the detailed conversation she had with Plano police about the disappearance of her daughter and the last person seen with her, Enrique Orochi. He said he never parked in the parking garage. He never walked Christina to the car until that was proven on the tape that he walked Christina to the parking garage. Eventually the truth will come out. They entered and then just three minutes a remarkably short amount of time, he exited. They thought alone, he said alone, but the tinted windows on the car, you know, it's hard to say. If she was unwilling, three minutes is a very short amount of time to get her into the boot. But maybe what if she was willing? She willingly got in his car. Maybe he said, you know, I'll drive you home. Maybe she was drunker than she thought. She got in his car willingly, was in the passenger seat and he drove off. Then he did something. But regardless, he had lied been caught in his own lies, now you don't know what he's capable of. The police traced both Enrique's and Christina's phones. About an hour after the car park footage, both phones pinged the same place north of shops at Legacy. Christina's phone then died. At 5.30, his phone pinged at home. Enrique was then in work the next morning at 11 a.m. Late night, by the way. Seriously, you should have been getting some should I? Especially because he arrived to work late. He's supposed to be in at 8. And when he, he came into work, right, his co-workers, they said he was limping, he had scratch marks. He looked, in their words, messed up. When the police asked about his injuries, he said he got them working on his car. When the tire landed on me, because I took it off, oh. it was too heavy, so he just landed it right. Oh, oh okay, okay. That makes where sense. All this, yeah. Okay, that makes sense. All right. <laughs> One woman, right, who was at the party, Ms. Boss is her name, that's her actual name, uh, she said that when Enrique left, he left mad because this boss woman, she, he was like flirting with her and all this kind of shit and she rebuffed him, she told him to take a hike. She shot him down and said he was none too keen about, you know, and then there was an arrest of Hunter Foster. Good evening, I'm Clarice Tinsley. The boyfriend of Christina Morris, a woman who has been missing for more than three months, was busted in a drug sting. There was a huge drugs bust in Dallas, and Hunter was dealing out of a club in Dallas. He admitted he sold Molly to undercover cops. The stuff he deleted on his phone? That was about the drugs. But they were still no closer to finding Christina. And though he was guilty of dealing, he wasn't guilty of being involved with his girlfriend's disappearance. He checked out. Damn. I mean, I guess, I guess that means it's clearly the guy that it is. 24 year old Enrique Orochi held on a $1 million bond. I just want to say that I'm innocent. Denying any involvement in Christina Morris's disappearance. An Orochi family spokesman says Orochi's been very depressed since his arrest about 8 o'clock Saturday morning at his parents' home in Allen, where investigators carried out evidence into the night. The spokesman denies Orochi tried to commit suicide, but does say he is being held under observation. In December 2014, Enrique was arrested for kidnapping Christina. The lab returned positive matches to her DNA from items in his car trunk. Kidnapping, not murder. They didn't have a body. The arrest affidavit stated that Affiant, that's the writer of the affidavit, believes Enrique Gutierrez Orochi was sexually frustrated that Boss rebuffed his sexual advances, and an opportunity presented itself for him to act upon his anger and sexual frustration when he found himself alone with Christina Morris. While he waited in jail, Enrique wasn't talking to the police. He would go on trial for kidnapping two years later, with still no discovery made regarding Christina. Now this is when the magic comes in, my friends, because when the trial was starting, the prosecution tried to get something into evidence. An olive jar. Holy shit. I hate olives. In the olive jar were bits of paper, cinnamon, and oil. And the jar was found inside one of his shoes in his bedroom. 
there was writing on the paper. So what happened was that the investigator upon finding this was like, well, it's clear as day what this is. Witchcraft. It's uh, witchcraft, I'll, I'll say that right. He was like, what the fuck is this shit? Clackety clackety. That little bastard. He's cooking up a dominion over others, Delio, according to this investigator's Googling, you know? Holy monkey. The judge uh, didn't allow it because although it's weird as shit, it sounds like the investigator just made that up. Maybe that's where he keeps his lucky olives. Who knows? And the trial went ahead. The prosecution had, well, all the evidence I went through. Or prove to you where she is. We're not required to prove to you what his motive was in doing this to Christina. We are required to show you who kidnapped Christina Morris in the early morning hours of August 30th, 2014. And the evidence in this case points to one man and one man only, Ricky Orochi. I don't know what happened to her. We went our separate ways. That was the first thread in the web of lies he started spinning with respect to the disappearance of Christina Morris. And when you look at all the evidence, it leads you to one conclusion, and one conclusion only. Enrique Orochi is responsible for Christina Morris's kidnapping. He's guilty. The car was remarkably clean, like he was trying to cover something up. Also remarkably clean was the underside of the car. And when it was examined, vegetation was recovered. Grasses, like maybe from a marsh. Like maybe from a dumping ground. The dent on the car too, the one Enrique said he injured himself fixing, well, that also looked like it could have been from hitting someone with the vehicle. The defense said it was circumstantial, and the evidence had been contaminated, and they never fully investigated Hunter. So here's the bottom line. I mean, this is what we're, what we're, where we really are. As far as the cops know, he's the last person seen with her, so he just must have done something is the idea. But even, even under that, if you were to grant them that for the sake of argument, there's been no evidence of the what, when, where, or how. So they cobble this accusation together, and in support of it, they speculate and guess. So let's talk about Hunter Foster. He didn't call or text anyone about Christina. You remember that? He's getting calls from Christina's co-workers that Saturday. Where is she? She was supposed to come to work today. He's not responding. He's not answering. He is the most likely suspect in a missing person case. He's her boyfriend. So the evidence is not there beyond a reasonable doubt. And I would ask for your verdict of not guilty. Thank you. Also, they had no body. For all they knew, she could have left the car park via a different exit and into the night. Enrique was found guilty at the end of the trial. He was sentenced to life in prison. But he wasn't a convicted killer. He still had no body. And Enrique will have no body other than his cellmate. Until at least 2046. But the searches never stopped. Enrique Orochi could have received only a few years behind bars. So when Judge Mark Rush sentenced him to life in prison for the aggravated kidnapping of Christina Morris, her mom's reaction was understandable. An answer prayer. An answer prayer. Not only for me, but for Christina. We're going to find Christina. You know why? Because we're stronger than him. Usually we have a group of about eight people six to eight people every week, and it's every Saturday morning we do this. We've done it for the last two, two years and however many months it's been since August. Can't give up. We, uh, we haven't found anything, so I'm hopeful that we will. They will continue until 2018. On the 7th of March that year, in a wooded area in the town of Anna, she was finally found. The Collin County Medical Examiner's Office has examined the recovered remains and this morning has positively identified the remains as those of Christina Morris. Builders and excavators working to clear some brush came across her. However, she had been there so long, it was impossible to tell how she died. But at least, she was finally brought home. No charges uh, regarding murder, you know, have been brought against 
Enrique, and unlikely, it's unlikely they ever will be. He's already serving life in, life in prison. So, it seems like, to date, nothing has happened on that front. And so ends uh, this old video, once again with, um, you know, kind of an unprovoked attack uh, on a woman, Enrique. What a fucking bitch. You know, he had a girlfriend the whole time, but still, because he got shut down, he decided to take it out on someone else. Christina, who had her whole life ahead of her. Should have taken it out on himself. Well, he ain't going anywhere anytime soon, so he can take it out on himself to his heart's content. Just don't give him any olives. It's, uh, witchcraft. Uh, witch, 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 uh, I'll say that right now. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I really appreciate you taking the time to do so. Uh, and I hope you enjoyed the video. So here, go on. I'll see you as always real soon in the next old video. Until then, please, as always, um, look out for each other, take care of yourselves. Because it's important for you to know. I love you. Mike out.